Hi there, Jeremy here. Welcome back to part two of this series where I build an app for the HoloLens. Last time I set the app up in Unity and deployed it to the HoloLens emulator. This time I'm going to write some C-sharp code to allow us to use the tap gesture to switch the application on and off. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is reopen our HoloListener application from last time. Okay, now it's opened. I'm going to create a few new things just to organize our project. Under Assets, I'm going to create a folder called Scripts. This is where we're going to store some of our C Sharp scripts. Okay, and inside the script, I'm going to create a script called Subtitle Manager. So I'm going to double click on this now and this is going to open an instance of Visual Studio. Okay, so this is a different instance of Visual Studio from the one that I used to manage the project, but that's fine. So, there's some code in here already. We're not going to use the update part of it, at least in this part of the tutorial, so I'm going to get rid of that. Also, just to keep the code clean, I see that the system collections object is not used, so I'm going to get rid of that too. Okay, so we need to add some objects to our script. The first one that we're going to add is something called a gesture recognizer. We're going to use this to recognize the tap gesture. You can see that Visual Studio doesn't know what it is, but if you hover over the little light bulb, it'll tell you what library you need to import into the code to recognize it. So inside the start method, I'm going to instantiate the object we've declared. So there's a few other things that I want to do here as well. We're going to use the gesture or the tap gesture to determine whether the application is sleeping or not. So I'm going to create a boolean variable here, which I'm going to call is sleeping. And by default, when we open the app, it is sleeping. So actually, I'm going to change that to true, which makes more sense. Other things that I need to add are public variables to get access to the subtitle text, the status text, and the status image. So I'm going to create text, no, nope. status text. I'm going to make that public. Let's sort out the fact that it doesn't recognize it. Let's go public raw image status image. And that should do us for now. Okay, so first thing you need to do with the gesture recognizer is to um, register an event, basically the event of whenever the HoloLens recognizes that the tap gesture has been carried out in front of its screen. So let's go with gesture recognizer dot tapped event. And we've got a new method here. Next thing we want to do is set the gesture recognizer to start capturing gestures. Which is done using this method. Okay, so let's start writing the code for what's going to happen when the HoloLens detects a tap. So, 
By default, the application opens in a state of sleeping, and when it receives a tapped event, it changes to awake. If it receives another tapped event, it goes back to sleep. So basically, we know whenever we go into the tapped event method that the current status of is sleeping should be the opposite of whatever it is right now. So let's toggle that. So that's the first part done. And we also know that we want different UI logic to apply whether it's sleeping or whether it's listening. So if it's sleeping, we're going to have a method called set sleeping. And if it's listening, we'll have a method called set listening. Okay. So these methods don't exist right now, but we can do something to change that. So whenever it's sleeping, we want to have a status text of sleeping, and we want to set the icon to be the sleeping icon. So that's pretty easy. So let's create the set sleeping method. So the first thing we do here is delete the not implemented exception and set this dot status text dot text equals sleeping. Similarly, for the set listening method, we can set the text to listening. And if we didn't have an image, this would be pretty much good enough. But what we want to do is change our image as well. So we can do that by changing the texture and loading an image from the resources folder and casting it as a 2D texture. I've blogged about this before. I'll put a link in the description for where I've written about it. But for now, it's very simple. We just write bare sleeping texture equals we're going to cast it as a 2D texture load from the resources folder and put in the name of the PNG that we want to load once we've got the texture we can go to the raw image and set the texture to be that sleeping texture. And that's it for sleeping. Very similar kind of logic for listening. We just change some of the text. The listening icon is called listening.png. So just write listening here. Let's change the variable name. And that's pretty much it for the code. OK, so if we go back to Unity and look at the subtitle manager, we can see that the text has been updated in the script view over on the right hand side. So next thing we need to do here is create a game object at the root of the hierarchy in our project. So let's just click in there and go to game object, create empty. Let's hit F2 and let's call it manager collection. What I'm going to do is drag my subtitle manager script in here so that it executes whenever the app runs. So you notice over on the right hand side that we've got two properties within the subtitle manager of status text and status image. So what that is saying is it needs to know which text box and which raw image that it should apply updates to. So that's pretty easy. We can drag the status text object from underneath our canvas in here and do the same thing for our status image. Drag it in here. Hit save. So let's build this.
described how to do this in the previous video and we'll run this in Visual Studio in the emulator and see what happens. Okay, so the project is now ready to go. So let's go back to Visual Studio. It tells us that it's changed, so I'm going to hit Reload All. I'm going to hit Control Shift B to build it. And once it's built, we can run the project to view it in the HoloLens emulator, which I've got running already. Something I learned from a viewer since last time was that if I click this, whenever I get the message up saying continue debugging, I can actually avoid it by just starting without debugging. So I can hit Control F5 and deploy this immediately to the HoloLens emulator. So there's the Unity splash screen. And it says it's sleeping by default. So let's click in the emulator and hit the Enter key to simulate a tap event. And you can see how it's changed. It's listening. It's got an ear icon. Again, if we want to toggle it back to sleeping, I hit Enter again. And it's sleeping again. So it's very simple. I haven't changed the actual subtitle text. This is just about changing the status of what the application is actually doing right now. But next time, in the final part of the tutorial, I'll show how to use the dictation recognizer object to pick up what the microphone hears and display this on the screen for the HoloLens wearer. Thanks a lot. See you next time.